What's going on? Justin here from Modern Mixing. And today I'm not going to take up too much of your time, but I wanted to talk about the importance of the phase relationships inside of your mixes. So it's not uncommon for engineers to go through live recorded drum tracks when they're mixing and just make sure that all the phase is aligned and they're not losing any punch or clarity from the drum kit. But in sample based music, I think it sometimes goes overlooked and I know even for me sometimes I forget to do these things. And these are the simplest things that can make your mixes that much better. So as I was going through this mix, I noticed something really weird about the kick that I wasn't getting the punch or clarity because I'd gone through a lot of the individual instruments to label everything. And I remember the kicks being fairly punchy from what I remember, but as I was mixing things in, it just didn't sound right. So, so I went back and I decided to check the balance of the kicks. And as I started bringing things up, I noticed when I started bringing up kick number two, you know, I got kick one and three to sort of sit nicely. And then as I bring up kick number two, I started to lose a lot of the bottom end. So to me, the first thing, you know, the most obvious thing for me was like, okay, well, it has to be a phase issue. So it ended up, I was right, it ended up being a phase issue and it was a really, really quick fix. So basically how I go about it is if I have a layers of kicks like this, I have three kicks uh, in this case, sometimes there's more and sometimes there's less. Um, but in this case there was three. So what I'll do is I'll start bringing up the first kick and just listen to it and then see what I hear. And I'll bring up the second kick and listen to it and see what I hear and then do the same thing with the third one. And really what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to define the characteristics of the kick. So for me, for instance, kick number one was like the guts of the record. Like this is the main kick that's going to do all the work. Um, then kick number three, this is going to be some bottom end. It seems like it's adding a little bit of sub. It has a little bit of a top click to it, but it was for me it was more a little bit more weight in the bottom end. And then kick number two, this is going to give it a little bit of character. It had like one of those big sort of thunder kick sounds to it. And this is going to add some character over top of kick number one and kick number three. So... Um, let's see and let's listen to them and then we'll see what happens. So we'll start with kick number one first. Let's listen to that. Okay, that's the punchy kick. Now let's go over to kick number three before we go to kick two. As you can hear what I'm saying, it's kind of got that 808 bottom end with a little bit of click on top. And then number two, we'll listen to that. See how it's kind of got that big, you know, wide sort of kick sound to it. So now let's start blending them all together and we'll see what happens. Okay, so I mean, I'm not trying to win any uh, prizes here with my mixes so far. I'm just trying to get the general balance. So these two sound okay. So let's go to kick number two now. Okay, so what do we hear? We hear the mid-range coming out and some of the top end. It sounds great, but we're losing a ton of that bottom end. So as we're adding these kicks in, what we're trying to do is we're not trying to alter the sound, even though we are changing it by layering it. We're trying to keep the original sound and we're just trying to build on top of that. So the simplest approach for me to do that was I took this trim plug in here and all I did was I fit, flipped the phase here. So you can see when it's lit up like that, it's it's engaged. And that just turns the kick 180 degrees, so it flips it completely. And then what happens is you end up retaining the punch or that bottom end of the other two kicks. So let's blend this in and let's see what happens now. So now you should be able to hear that there's the bottom end is still there, it's maintained, and plus now you're getting that mid-range from that kick. So of course this isn't complete, you're going to have to do some other mixing to it. Like to me it's sounding a little bit too tubby right now, but again, you want to start off with that foundation and you want to be in control of the tweaking and how the kick sounds. You don't want problems like phasing and stuff like that to you know alter your kicks and, and mess with your mix. You want to be the one making all those decisions. So quickly what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the trim off or the phase button, I guess you could say, and I'll turn it back on and then you'll immediately hear the kick, like the bottom end just disappear. So let's do that. Let's 
So there you have it. You should be able to hear that as I was A-Bing it. The kick, as soon as I turned it off, boom, the kick, the bottom end just disappears. So that's it. So hopefully that encourages you to go through your kicks um, even before you start your mix. Sometimes, like I said, I forget to do this, but it's a good idea to just check the balance of the three of them. Make sure you're not losing any clarity or definition. If you have to, throw a phase button or a trim plug in or something like that. Um, you know, on them, you can even try one at a time if you want and see which, which version of the, the phase flip you think sounds better. So, yeah, so that's it. Hopefully you enjoyed that, and I'll see you on the next video.